Uh, we got yes. a, uh, this story here everybody's buzzing about. Yes. The lost iPhone controversy. Yes. Uh, this story has to do with Apple and uh, the technology blog Gizmodo. Gizmodo is in a bit of trouble right now. And the reason why is because an engineer for Apple accidentally left his uh, iPhone prototype at a bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is, of course, the iPhone prototype for the newest generation of iPhones. Mm -hmm. uh, so what ended up happening is a 21-year-old gentleman by the name of Brian Hogan finds this iPhone, and he he starts shopping it around. He tries to sell it. So who ends up buying it? Gizmodo for five thousand dollars. Because they're going to break it apart and they're going to show their uh, audience, hey, this is the new latest iPhone, and. For them, that makes a lot of sense. Their audience loves that, et cetera. Yeah, you know, 5000 bucks for a scoop like that, I guess that makes sense. I mean, if they got the money, I know we don't, but if they do, so it makes sense. Now, one of the problems is, is it stolen or is it really lost? Right. right? So just real quick on that, uh, you know, in the beginning, they were really charging that it was stolen and that this whole lost thing was uh, made up. But then in some of the later articles I saw, they identified the guy who accidentally left it at the bar, at some German bar or whatever. Right, area. his name is Gary Powell. Well, then, if he did accidentally leave it, then it wasn't even stolen. But if he accidentally left it and someone took it from the bar, that's stealing it. You don't just take it. Ah, you say tomato, I say tomato, man. You leave a $20 bill on there. Well, not one for the waitress, okay, but I don't know. You're, okay, and you're gone. You're long on If I see you and you drop the $20 bill, I'm going to give it to you, right? right? But if you went home, I'm not going to go all the way home and chase you down. I'm going to put the $20 bill in my pocket. Listen, this Brian Hogan guy, I know he's trying to find the right defense and, you know, his lawyers are trying to find ways for us to feel sympathy toward him. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was shopping this device around. He stole this device. All right, look, I, you, again, we disagree on, on that definition, but, but I hear you. He definitely shopped it around. JR? Uh, I would be almost completely in, in agreement with Anna, but he must not have really known what he was doing. He got $5,000 for it. Yeah. Yeah, look, look, if he was some sort of master iPhone you know, thief, uh, you go and take to, to their competitors and c cash 5000 5000 Dude, you don't know what you're doing. Right. Gizmodo. What kind of conversation we're having? He Dude, actually, he found it at the bar, and he's like, I don't know, can I spell this thing? I bet you that's what 9 out of 10 guys would have thought. And he did a gigantic fa favor for Apple's competitors, because now they know exactly what the prototype uh, was, and they know exactly what Apple was planning on releasing. So uh, now the competitors have a huge advantage, because they have inside information on what's going on in Apple. It doesn't matter. They're not going to make it as good as iPhone does anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, the, the, but here comes the interesting part of the story, uh, which is uh, Apple's reaction. Okay. Right. So they go ballistic. Actually, Apple does go ballistic, right? But what's even more interesting is California police. Mm -hmm. Okay, they go ballistic. So the Rapid Enforcement Allied Computer Team decides <laughs> that they're going to go. That's an actual team. <laughs> okay. Okay. They decide they are going. I love the Rapid Enforcement Computer Team. They're like, go. <laughs> okay, but apparently not so because they're breaking down doors. Yes, they decided to go raid the home of Jason Chen. Jason Chen is the editor for Gizmodo. So they raid his home. They broke down his door. Yes. Okay, they raid his home and they take all his computers. Yeah, they take his hard drives, okay. everything that they can find. And then they go and arrest the other guy and now everybody's in trouble. And Apple sends some Apple cops after the other guy. Okay, the guy who found the original phone. There are Apple cops? I didn't know that. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit more careful around Apple. It's like when Fox News, Bill O'Reilly was like, oh, you leave messages for us. We're going to send the Fox cops to get you. Okay, and Apple, you don't want to get compared to Fox. I mean, these are, and he was bluffing. There are no Fox cops, but apparently there really are Apple cops. Anyway, and then the thing is, you know, look, California police busting down the door with their rapid enforcement or whatever. Why are they doing that? Because Steve Jobs called and said, hey, you know what? Guess who pays your bills? Now go break that guy's door down. I mean, I'm not saying it's quid pro quo and it's, you know, as simple as that. But basically, I mean, it's like we did the story yesterday on the parking ticket. If somebody really rich and really connected and really powerful is concerned about an issue, trust me, the cops get a lot more concerned about that issue. Of course. If you had left your money at a bar, you think they're breaking down people's doors to find 
your things? No, there's no question about it. Uh, th of course not, right? Right. But look, it, Apple has a ton to lose here. Mm -hmm. You got to keep in mind, they are super, super secretive of their products and what they're planning on releasing. And like I said, this gives their competitors a huge advantage. Well, if they're so secretive about it, how about you don't leave them lying around in a bar? How about that? Okay. Why don't you break down the door of your employee, the clown who left it at the, you know, the beer house? I feel oh, bad yeah, for that guy. Guy. Here's the thing. The reason why I am siding with Apple on this story is because, okay, so let's say we're saying that Jason Chen is a journalist, right? There is, there are ethics within journalism that I believe hold true. Right? In this case, in this case, he did something extremely unethical. You don't pay for a story. You know that. You know that's not right. You don't pay for a story. You don't pay your sources. No. You know what? I, I, th this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. <laughs> and look, I know that, but that's not illegal, okay? You shouldn't pay okay, for okay. your source, but that doesn't mean rapid enforcement's up your ass stealing all your computers. Well, that's a separate okay. issue, and that's where the whole, was this stolen property or not comes in, okay? Right. But I'm talking about ethics, and that's a completely different okay. angle to the story. Uh, right, but look, it's a wild, wild... No, I don't even care that much about that. But look, here's uh, the part you also have to consider from Apple's perspective. Losing all that goodwill, okay? I mean, if John Stewart's ripping you, and we're ripping you, or at least I am, she's on your side, okay? <laughs> and everybody else is ripping you, it's not worth it. It's not losing all that goodwill to, be, to seem like the bad guys here. Besides which, it's, it's the horse is already out of the barn. You're closing the door when the horse is galloping over to Android. <laughs> okay, so what good does it do you anyway? What, the next time they get a gadget, they're not going to leak it online? Of course they are. Mm -hmm. So, no, not buying it. Guilty. Who's guilty? Apple. Um okay, leave people's doors alone, okay? And so, and stop influencing the cops to, to go after people uh, that you're unhappy about. No, not having it. Not buying it. In fact, Jake, cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. Always looking out for the little guy. That's me. Yeah. By the way, by the way, I, I didn't make my stance on the raid issue clear. Like, I'm definitely against the raid. Like, but I can also understand why Apple would be extremely upset about this. I don't think that Jason Chen is in the clear either. I don't think he's Mr. Innocent here.